Say his words! What a wonderful day! Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is absolutely breathtaking. West Ball delivers an astounding visual achievement that is sure to be one of the best films of the summer. It honors the legacy of Caesar and it paves the way for new characters and stories to come next. And I cannot wait to see where the series goes. It's beautiful. It's strong. It's a lengthy reintroduction to the beloved world that brings new and exciting possibilities. Owen Teague and Freya Allen are fantastic. Kevin Durand is terrifying. I just wish we had more of him. West Ball has laid the groundwork for the next evolution of the franchise. The film boasts great visuals, fantastic lore building, and deep emotional connection that makes this journey worth the watch. Hello and welcome to the movie podcast review of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. My name is Daniel, I am one of your hosts today, and joining alongside me are my fellow apes. It's Shabazz. I was going to do an ape sound, but I was like, is that rude to apes? Like, I don't want to upset the apes out there because they could be listening to the show. They could very well be listening, but I'll be honest, you're upsetting me now that you didn't do one. Oh, I thought because you were an ape. And I was like, well, that's kind of rude about yourself, man. Be kind to yourself. Tell that to my girlfriend. (laughs) (laughs) She always calling you a a gorilla. It's true. And Anthony, how are you doing, Anthony? I'm doing well. I'm not going to do no ape sounds because uh, I'm no ape. Right? Yeah. <laughs> now you sound like you hate the apes. That's why you're not doing. Like one. we're we're considered what uh, like yeah. alpha apes or something. We are apes in a sense, but we're like higher. Yeah. Than, so why would I, you know, become like an oh, ape? Right? Like why would I lower myself? To I get it. Yeah. Exactly. I get it. You're better yeah. than the apes. You're racist, cool, man. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't know that by now, you're if you don't know that by now, <laughs> wow. welcome to the show. Well, we're just human elitists here only. If you're not human. In, then you don't matter. Why you clearly. listen to the I'm show? Just, yeah, well, you don't get your sea urchin ass out of here. You know? <laughs> wow, are sea urchins listening to the movie podcast? Uh, you never as well? know. If they are. We don't want them listening. Yeah, get wow. sea urchins out of here. Okay, now we know. If I were any ape from the Planet of the Ape franchise, like what would which ape would I be? And I think for me personally, I would be more of a. I'd probably be Co- uh, Koba because Koba has like that penchant for vengeance and setting the world on fire. So I think that would be my ape. If I were to compare myself to any of the apes in this movie or in the previous Got franchise, you. but I want to know, like, what ape would you guys want to be? I love that you didn't even ask us, like, which character. It's like, no, you're just like, no, I'm Koba. Uh, I'm a, I'm a bad guy in this. You know, um, hey man, it's <laughs> am I a bad guy? Like, you know, they tested on me. I just want a little bit of vengeance. Human work. Human, what the god! I, I got, I can't, I can't get over Don the Planet of the Apes. What a movie! Um, honestly, I, I feel like, yeah, I feel like we'd be like, we'd be like Caesar, man. I'd be a, a chimpanzee. Uh, I think Caesar is, you know, the one to look to. But honestly, though, Maurice, who doesn't want to be Maurice? Maurice has a has a great life, you know, teaching the. Know. the um, Maurice is pretty cool though. They're they're cool. just chill. He's cool, they're but chill, like you know, he's, he's an orangutan, right? I believe. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Orangutan is not good enough for you. I yeah, apologize. I, I don't. I just I'm not a big fan. Not a big yeah. fan of it because they're slower and like they mm-hmm. got dad bods all the time. And not yeah. like I don't have a dad bod, but like just saying, like if I'm going for something, I'm going for like a gorilla. You know, just uh, I just was gonna a say, I don't trust the gorillas in this world though. The gorillas in this world are like the cops. Is that the, weird that uh, in every yeah in every movie in every show <laughs> whenever like animals are assuming human roles, the gorillas yeah. are the bad guys. Like. That's true. Let's look back to Mighty Joe Young. You know, mm-hmm. he was a good guy. Well, I, I've never was. watched yeah, Mighty. I, guess. I haven't watched. I, I, I know so. of it, but I haven't watched it. Charlize Theron, man, you got to watch it. Charlize but Theron, I suspect yeah. she's but a I, guy. She's not a I suspect. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect he's a bad guy off screen, though, because no, no, he's good. Guy you know, he just, you know he's what? Huge gorillas are used as guards, like because of their massive yeah. stature. Like, I get why they are looked at as a bad guy, and I think they just get the what, what is it? The shit end of the stick of the. And not, no pun intended for apes uh, throwing shit. But, well, <laughs> I think that, but we really said, man, oh, to the to the chimps listen to the show. Yeah, I'm so sorry. They are like they're we, they're, we they're pulling their AirPods like out right now. Yeah. By the way, not only are the chimpanzees and the apes upset at the moment, but so are all the people that 
love leaving comments on our episodes like we don't want to hear this in the beginning we just want the review how about this how about we give it to them just really quickly though of course this is the movie podcast you could catch brand new episodes all throughout the week including interviews reviews and discussions and all the latest movies and series we were lucky to do some interviews for this very movie so tomorrow on the movie podcast feed and on youtube you'll be able to catch our sit down discussion with owen teague and Kevin Durand, they were here in Toronto. We got to sit down with them for 10 minutes, and it is just full of hijinks. So it's a, it's a really fun interview, so make sure, time. make sure you tune in for that. We had a really great time with them. Of course, this film is releasing in theaters on May 10th, and I want to say thank you to our friends at 20th Century Studios Canada for inviting us to watch it and to participate in the reviews. Of course, if you like everything that we're doing here on the movie podcast, you can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify. Give us five stars. Join our Patreon if you want some exclusive episodes and if you want to help us keep the lights and the mics on here. Uh, you could also subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts. So that goes a long way as well. Shay, you have something to add? Yeah, I just want to remind people that for a movie like this, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, a lot of people are looking forward to it. And if you actually like, like what Daniel said, if you actually subscribe to wherever you can listen to us and wherever you can see us, you could have been someone lucky enough to go to the advanced screening for this movie through our show. And by the end of our review, you could have been like, oh man, yeah, they were right. Or they were stupid and wrong. So, hey, (laughs) again, it pays to watch and listen to the show and check out our socials as well, because yeah, you could have won a advanced screening in Canada. So you have to fly here. We don't pay for flights. People ask no, that we a don't. lot, but we don't pay for your flight. But also, if you were lucky enough to be one of the winners in Toronto, guess what? Kevin, Duran, and Owen Teague were also at that screening to surprise they everyone. Were. So, yeah. You know, that was a surprise that they're at the screening yesterday. So there you go. But let's get right into it. Of course, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is the fourth in this new rebooted trilogy. This is directed by Wes Ball. So he is taking over directing duties for... Um, Matt Reeves, who has gone on now to do, obviously, the Batman film, which we love very, very much. This film, like I said, stars Kevin Durant, Owen Teague, Freya Allen, who has been on the show before, and William H. Macy uh, playing a human character. We're going to get into all of that and more. Uh, Shay, start us off with your first reaction to Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is beautiful and strong. This is a really... Welcome addition to this already enormous franchise. I mean, if you count the Tim Burton film, this is the 10th Planet of the Apes movie that we're getting. Now, I'm going to be totally honest here. I have not really seen the movies from the 60s and beyond. I think my first foray really was the Tim Burton film. And as a, as a nine-year-old or 10-year-old, I was like, this is a weird movie. I don't know if I really <laughs> like it. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. And then, and then you know, you jump into the Matt Reeves or the, sorry, is it Reese? Who directed the first one again? Was it as Rupert, Rupert Wyatt, I believe? Rupert Wyatt, right? Yeah. So yeah. Rupert Wyatt directed Rise and then Matt Reeves, uh, you know, took over for Dawn and War. And man, that, that trilogy is phenomenal. I think that trilogy, we hear so often it being described as the Batman, the Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy, where it carries a very similar, uh, you know, trajectory of films. Like I, I love Rise. I absolutely adore Dawn. I think it's my favorite. And then I really like War as well. There's some parts of War that I find a bit slower, but overall, really like it. So I was a little nervous, kind of getting into Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, because you know, with the fourth film, we're watching this after so many years after the last one. It's also the first. Disney distributed film as well. So they're taking their own different liberties here with how they're going to make this film production wise as well. But I'm pleasantly surprised. We have a new cast. We have a new crew kind of making this film as well. No one really is returning from the previous film. I don't think any producers are either. But Wes Ball is here and he is ready to take this this franchise and 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 take it to new heights and i think he did a phenomenal job of it we have a great cast we have owen teague freya allen and kevin durand all playing different roles and again there's a lot more characters in this movie that really get their time to shine but what i loved so much about this movie is the dynamic between almost all of them a couple of my complaints about this film are i don't think and it's it's maybe it's unfair to compare but i mean i think at the same time it is fair to compare it doesn't reach the highs of the matt reeves trilogy or the original trade that we kind of got a few years ago i think this movie is absolutely fantastic but that those movies i think still have a bar that this movie is still just kind of below it and, and it's not to say this is not a good movie it's just 
it didn't reach those heights for me. I also think it takes way, way, way too long to get to Proximus, our main villain here, Mr. Kevin Durand. By the time we get to him, it's not a very long role either. And it kind of just feels like, okay, we, we get we get him in these great moments. He definitely leaves a lasting impact. But you're just kind of wondering, man, I wish from the get-go, from the beginning, we saw more of him. And it's a long film as well. It's just about two hours and a half. So you really start to feel the length of this movie also, which can, you know, when there's a lot of beautiful scenery shots happening, I think us three, when we were watching the film, we can appreciate that and be like, wow, I can't believe you know, they're shooting this outdoors or the, the, the effects of the, the CG look so amazing that like Weta keeps pushing the boundary. And again, you have movies like Avatar that come out where they really make you believe in these blue alien, these Navi. And apes and monkeys are something that we can actually connect with and see that there's so many times where I just we were just like, wow. We were shocked. We were blown away as to how lifelike these creatures are looking because it's insane. But again, some of these issues I have here, but overall, it's a movie that I really, really enjoyed and I'm excited to, to talk more about it with you guys. It's funny you mentioned lifelike because it's not just lifelike anymore. It's like human-like because this is being set hundreds of years after, many generations after the the original trilogy of this film of Caesar – these apes are now evolving. They speak a lot more like humans do, where if you remember in the original trilogy, it was a lot more hoarse or broken or things like that. So to see them evolving on that scale is really cool. Um, and it's gorgeous. I mean, like we, we've spoken about this a lot on main episodes. Anthony, I know, has mentioned it too, where he's just like, you know, we've we've peaked when it comes like to apes. Like this is, they're, all, they're always going to look amazing and, and they look incredible throughout this. And I think Wes Ball, who comes from a VFX background, who's done big trilogy, like uh, he's done the, obviously the Maze Runner films. He's coming into this with a background where you're like, you know what? Let's do something where we have an established world and we're really putting the apes at the forefront. And as we've seen in the original trilogy of this, it's weird calling something the original trilogy without thinking of Star Wars. But as we've seen in the original trilogy of these apes films, that they've transitioned from being, you know, human focused to being more ape focused and having Caesar lead. Uh, this film is is exactly that. The apes are leading this franchise. We are having, you know, we have character like, like Freya Allen. We have William H. Macy who do show up, but the apes are, are, are the core of the story. And I think it works really well because a lot of this film, and, you know, Shay, you mentioned the length of it being longer. The first hour of this film really is just, you know, setting up, what is to come next and having the building blocks for what is going to be hopefully this next trilogy of films. But I'll talk more about my thoughts in a second. Anthony, please jump on in. Give us your thoughts on Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. You're right, Daniel. The 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 CG for apes have been better and better every year. It's like an iPad like or an iPhone. Every year it gets <laughs> slightly better and slightly better. And this one is even better. Uh, it's been, what, seven years since the last Planet of the Apes? So it's it's been a great it was a good, been a good time of of away from from these guys and then coming back to them. So it's it's nice to see them on the big screen. And really, like this movie, kind of hits that fantasy mo- element of Planet of the Apes, where the first three were grounded because it took place in we'll say a modern our time, a modern time where we see it happen now it's like 200 years so now you kind of get to explore the fantasy aspect of these apes ruling and living in this world and the one thing i love about the last franchise was that it legitimized these apes like it made these apes feel really good to see on screen and they had really good stories to tell and the connection and the animation of of cg as well as just the, the photorealistic look of these apes just look great. And I think West Ball took that and continued that story with this kingdom because you are getting a glimpse of what 200 years have looked like for these apes in this movie. You are going to see them living in their tribes. You're going to see them battling it out with other tribes. And again, horses are a big thing. I'm, I'm still waiting for you know rise of the horses because i'm i'm like these horses they're like (laughs) if it's not a human it's an ape and so on but it's just they are now living in this world they are the main uh i guess predator or apex predator of this world top of the food chain now. top of the food chain and we see there's a scene where you see the humans and they're literally 
caveman style, right? They're they're yeah. just it's almost like they're gazelles in the wild, yes, right? They, they're like, oh my god, they don't like they, speak, they shoot up when they see, yeah. They don't talk, they just kind of look bewildered at what's happening. They don't even acknowledge the apes, they're just like animals. So I love this lore that they're building. It was a long process to get to, for sure, because again, he is establishing a you know, bigger picture here, but I do enjoy everything that we got from it. I enjoy, enjoyed the performances. Um, I enjoyed the, the animation and the, and the cinematography and the CG and the score. I think everything works well and there's so many things that you pick from it, but it is missing that groundness that we got from the last two films where you just felt like, mm, this feels good. Like you can see the the struggle between humans and, and ape and maybe we'll see that future in the franchise but i think what we have right now is a good you know starting point to continue this franchise because literally we came out of the movie and we were talking to someone who passed by who who said you know i don't i hope this movie doesn't ruin the franchise i'm like dude a the franchise wasn't always in a good spot because if you look at the 70s and sorry the 60s and 70s (laughs) planet of the apes there were just people dressed as apes like this is the closest we'll ever get to photorealistic apes talking on screen with human reactions like you see it in their face their eyes they're just how they the lighting it just looks too good and it's it's amazing to think that 30 years ago or 40 years ago we were stuck with that and now we get this but I think the, even like 20 years ago, right? Like look at years. the Tim Burton one, right? Which I feel like, like we, Tim Burton but, tried his best to recreate that, but... I mean, those suits looked really good. The Tim Burton suits did look... They looked good, right? They just... The, wasn't the makeup and movie. effects and everything, yes. Like, there's no denying that the Tim Burton films looked as good as they could without the advancements of technology. Yeah. And I just think that the Planet of the Apes franchise is in a really good spot for the next 20 years. Like, I don't ever see it becoming... You know, a throwaway cinema or or just a campy, a campy lost form. I really think that they they got the the mold and they can continue telling those stories. I don't ever think it'll be like something like Fast and the Furious. Like, there's no monkeys going to be driving cars or horses and going crazy with its CG uh, ballistic. Why not? I, I just want don't that see now. it. Now you now I want that. <laughs> <laughs> now I want I want the old Brazil scene but with horses just yeah. like, taking a big bank. I do want These the rise of the horses. I want that to be the continuation. <laughs> the I want them to be the smart ones. Horses I'm on their hind you, legs. These monkeys are going to find a way to get to space. It's all going to come full circle and go back to the original. It seems like uh, they are leading to that too. Yeah. We don't we we don't know, uh, but you know, Anthony, exactly what you were saying. Something that I love so much about just being in this world is like it almost felt like like I was listening to ASMR at some points because of just how natural, how beautiful the world sounds. It feels like such a lived in environment. So I was almost just like I'm watching like a a National Geographic documentary right now. Like I'm just so immersed in this world and seeing like okay, like you know this like uh, this monkey tribe. They're like the eagle bearers and they have to go get their eggs. And this is you know we saw this clip at CinemaCon and this uh, a part of it is actually online now too for you to see. But Noah and um, his his friends are basically having to go to get an egg, and that's kind of like their getting a knife and going into the wild moment where it's like they're coming of age. They need to have an egg. They need to protect this egg so they can raise it and have it part of their, you know, to have it as their eagle in the clan, right? And I think that's so cool to see that. And again, it reminds me so much of Avatar. And I think Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes and Avatar, the the, the way of water, have a lot of similar DNA where you're just, you feel like you're just transported and you're watching it. And I love Owen Teague so much as Noah because he is somebody who... um is just trying to figure it out and he's just he's he's young he's 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 a kid still and he just wants to you know do right by his father and obviously honor his mom and it's again it's so interesting to hear about these dynamics but again at the end of the day they're monkeys and it's so cool to see that and i'm watching this and we're watching this and it doesn't feel weird and again it's just it's such a testament to how this trilogy has how the original trilogy built up this world that we are now just like yeah monkeys talking I totally believe it. It does not feel weird to me the same way a nine foot tall Navi speaking does not feel weird to me either because they've earned that with the world building that they've done. And um, 
I think where, you know, things kind of go off and how Anoa feels responsible to what the, you know, the events that kind of set off the rest of the film go. Um, I think that's a lot for him to bear. And I, and I really loved Owen Teague's performance in this for him to be our kind of our Caesar through this, our, our, you know, our eyes. And he's not supposed to be Caesar. He's not supposed to be the one leading a revolution or anything like that. It really is a different story that we're telling. And I think that's so fun to see. Shay is completely right, though. I think Proximus, who is really fun. He is very intense and scary. And Kevin Duran, um, you know, he does the voice in our interview. So, so look forward to that. Uh, but I think Kevin Duran's performance as Proximus is so damn great and intimidating and him being on this pursuit of I want knowledge I want to learn I want to be like those humans that I've heard so much about in 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 the mythology and I think that's a really cool premise that now being so many generations removed from the original films we can now have this lore and I'm so interested to see I'm like okay like what what does he want what is he trying to get and I think that's what's really fun but yeah I wish there was way more of him and I wish we got to him a little bit sooner because the scenes that he is on screen he is so so impactful and it's so damn good um one of the other things i love so much about this film other than it just being absolutely beautiful and just breathtaking to look at um is the fact that the legacy of caesar is not forgotten if you are someone going into this you're like no i don't really care because you know you know caesar had his, his films and it's done no his presence is felt throughout all of this caesar has become like the jesus christ figure of this world and it's so interesting to see how his mythology is being interpreted by different apes where we'll have apes like Raka in this film who see him one way and we have people like Proximus who see Caesar another way and it really is it really does echo how we look at different figures and political figures and religious figures throughout history that um, you know we'll take the teachings of one we'll look at these teachings but we'll ignore these ones and you know we'll kind of craft whatever mythology we want to suit our own you know selfish ambitions and I think that's really cool how this film explores a lot of that but other than that I think as the first film of a new trilogy I think there's a lot that it needed to establish definitely you feel the pace at some points but what it does to get me excited and especially where this film ends off for where things are going to go, I think we have potentially um, another all-timer trilogy, trilogy coming up, right? I mean, we have, you know, look at Rise. Rise was a success when it came out, and Dawn happened, and we are just like, holy shit, they are doing something special. And I really hope uh, West Ball, we know we ha- he has this next gig booked with Legend of Zelda. I really hope if he comes back or whoever is coming in, to take the reins of this franchise now um they really you know continue with where this is ending off to tell an an amazing amazing story what you see in this movie just the landscape whatever he has planned for hyrule and zelda and link is going to be astonishing because he knows how to create those environments because you see those environments in this movie it's kind of like this practice ground for him and i'm like man freya (laughs) allen as as zelda looks she <laughs> looks so much like let's zelda right like let's yeah, do let's it campaign for i that. see let's it campaign that. Yeah. um i'm not too sure who would be link but i know you know freya allen had ONT for <laughs> yeah. and they just yeah <laughs> that'd just, be funny and they just make an apes movie while <laughs> yeah. this. zelda of the apes, apes. yes but 100 percent, you're right anthony right like there's so many moments i'm looking at just the cinematography of this film and i'm just like holy shit and this is hyrule just seeing the forestry seeing the towers i'm like oh my god these are like the towers and- in 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 um in Breath of the Wild, but, and but that, now I'm seeing it's crazy. I'm seeing Kevin Durand as Ganondorf now too. Like I'm just oh, oh my god, Kevin Durand as Ganondorf would be amazing. Like please, this Wes, this is all this. kind of working. Like I feel like this is all kind of happening. <laughs> He kind of did make that movie just without making it. Listen, when we were, you know, in his presence today, in his in his most righteous presence today, I definitely, if you were to, if he was to say like I'm Ganondorf, I'm like I, I believe you. Dude. I'm like, like yeah, totally. That what he what he's able to pull off with his voice is is truly incredible, and I think. If you want somebody with a very intimidating stature, I mean, there he is, right there. But uh, yeah, Anthony nailed it. I mean. What wherever whatever's going to come with the Legend of Zelda film, we already know automatically it's going to be a damn incredible 
looking movie. I was just going to talk quickly about the score as well. I know we've kind of touched on it, but now John Paisano has, has come in and it, it's, it reminds me, I, I love, there's a lot of great throwbacks to the original score from Rise mm-hmm. all the way down, like the, the subtle piano notes that are just kind of playing. I love that whenever they're referencing Caesar or referencing those previous films, in a way, that kind of, that, that melody kind of plays through. Something that I think I think that's also important, and it's a question that I've, I think people have kind of asked a lot about this movie is, do I have to have seen the previous entries like all the way down to the 70s? No, definitely not. I don't think you even have, have to have watched the last trilogy that came here with Rise because a lot of it is kind of answered in the opening text and then the movie kind of just starts afresh. So you could totally start with this movie and have a totally different experience with it, but you're not going to be lost. You're not going to be like, oh, wait, what? I don't know what's happening. Why are these apes on horses? Like it is, <laughs> it is pretty explained. And if you can get past that element of it, but they do answer a lot of that because again, this is taking many generations later. So some of those questions of how this happened and why is this happening are brought up in this movie and the, it makes sense when it's when it's happening. So if you do want a bit more background as to, hey, how are they talking? Definitely then watch that trilogy. But if you're cool to just jump in, you're not going to feel lost. So I know we had the, so you know, why those monkeys and horses? And are we like, those chipmunks are flying planes. So that that was our, God, that's a that's a deep cut for, you know, long-time listeners. A lot of, and, love, podcast. Love, and then Velociraptors flying really fast as well. Yeah, that's that's another one from uh, from a couple of years ago. My God. Um, I, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, Butchering this name, uh, the cinematographer, because we spoke about their work a lot, Gula Padosh. Is it Gula Padosh? Gula Padosh, who is the cinematographer who worked with Wes Ball on um, the Maze, Maze Runner, Runner films, yeah. and he did uh, the recent Jumanji Shazam. films as well, too. Shazam, Fury of the Gods. And uh, yeah, John Paisano, fantastic, fantastic score for this, of course. Uh, if only, you know, in a world of so many blockbusters that we get, if only all of them could be like the apes trilogy the apes franchise where we are getting for the last over you know for 12 years now we've been getting consistently incredible films and they've only been getting better they've only been looking better and i feel like they come and they go but there's such a there's such a fan base for them so i'm really hoping that this does well but let's get to our final recommendation shabazz i'm going to get you to start us off i'd say watch it i think this is a fantastic film i think it's a great lead up to the summer i mean we're getting into that season already with summer blockbusters coming out it's a great time if you have watched any of the previous apes film you kind of know what you're getting in for like daniel mentioned the fandom is there they're a silent group they're like the silence you know like as they keep saying in this movie so it's it's like that just just show up watch the movie have a great time watch it in wonderment uh, i wish we got to see it in imax because this is the first film also being released for imax not re-released like how war was um, so I really wish you got to see it in that full screen, but watched it in AVX here at Cineplex and it looked phenomenal. The colors and everything were so great. Definitely go watch it. I'm right there with you. This is Watch It For Me. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is just breathtaking. It's beautiful. Um, I, I truly think it's one of the most astounding visual achievements that we've gone on screen in a long time. And I think this is the best looking CG that we've gone since Avatar The Way of Water. This is this is the type of movie that you have a good time going to movies to the watch. And it makes me so excited to see what is to come. Anthony, please take us on home. It's also Watch It For Me. And that's I it. love it. That's it. Short and sweet, you know? <laughs> that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. Of course, this is the movie podcast, and this was our review of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. If you like what we're doing, make sure you follow us on social media at the movie podcast. You can see all of the fun stuff that we get up to. Check out our show notes because you can subscribe to us on YouTube. You could join our Discord. We'll be opening up a Planet of the Apes room. Um, that you can uh, swing around in, obviously, this week after you watch the movie. We'll be talking about all of spoilers, so watch out for that. And look forward to all of the other cool stuff that we have coming up. You know, it's May. We're getting to the summer movies, and it's not stopping here on the movie podcast. You're already in the right place. So thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting us, and thank you for watching our review. That was this time with the movie podcast, and we'll see you next. <laughs>